self-trust it's understanding that you are a multi-dimensional human being and that you're always going to have different facets of yourself cropping up in different places at different times depending on the context and what you're going through in life and that the key to trusting yourself is not to suppress or push away all of those parts but it's to bring them into the light and learn to hear them learn to acknowledge what they have to say you know I think that self-trust is about taking all of the parts of yourself that you want to push away the parts you don't want to hear and saying hi what is it you're asking from me what do you really need from me and seeing how you can incorporate that or reparent the parts that are talking to you from the traumatized section of who you are and give all of those bits a voice and Give them space. Give them time to breathe. And say, you know what? I hear you. I acknowledge you. I'm not going to pretend you don't exist. I'm not going to pretend what you're saying isn't real or valid. I hear you. And here is what we're going to do. Because those parts aren't a part of you. They are you. You know? There are different sections of us. But those things are us and we have to learn to work with them and deal with them in ways that are healthy and true and loving and so today's video is about self-trust and how we can trust ourselves and in fact learn why we don't trust ourselves that's what we're about greetings hey guys welcome to my channel if you're new here greetings hi if not thank you so much for being back everybody who's here gets a greetings hi greetings hi hey guys hey and for those of you who are watching and haven't liked and subscribed yet then i really do not know what the delay is okay thank you thanks for doing that as usual if you make it all the way to the end please comment your top three favorite emojis i would go for the pink hearts it's like a double heart thing you know two of those and a sparkle in between them hearts sparkle hearts that's that's lovely that's cute okay let's get into it okay so here's a scenario i was watching i think his name is Frank James, he's a YouTuber, and he had a brilliant scenario that he painted out that really helps you think about self-trust in a different way. It goes like this. Imagine, like me, you are a chai latte cappuccino drinking type of girl, and you have decided that you really want to go to this coffee shop it just brings you a little bit of joy and you just want to hang around there for an hour or two and have a good time and just be by yourself and replenish and then the other side of you the other part of your brain that doesn't want to engage in capitalism is like oh you know it's a waste of money it's going to take you really long to get to the coffee shop so you're wasting like petrol and transport even getting there and then you're gonna like pay for a really overpriced coffee when you should be saving the money then you're gonna come all the way back and then like you should have been doing something more productive with that time and energy you know what I'm talking about it's that voice and so you decide you know what okay fine we will definitely we will definitely go tomorrow you know just give that voice a little time to rest and tomorrow comes and you push it away and you'll say okay we'll definitely we'll go tomorrow and that comes and it's we'll go tomorrow we'll go tomorrow now imagine the part of you that really wants to go to this coffee shop is a child and the child goes okay but you said we'd go yesterday you promised me you promised me 
we would go. One, that child learns that they can't really trust what you say or that you're going to do what you said you were going to do. And two, that their needs and wants are maybe not that important to you. Do you see where I'm going with this? And so when we squish away certain parts of ourselves, we inherently say, no, this part of me is bad and therefore I am not going to listen to it. And that's not the case. You're not giving it a chance to breathe and you're also not keeping the promises to yourself that you said you were going to keep. And so tip number one is to keep small promises to yourself. You need to learn to keep small promises to yourself. That example is to demonstrate that when you say you're going to do something, you need to do it to teach yourself that you can be trusted, that you are a good bet, that you are the wiser voice, that you say you're going to do things and you're going to follow through. Building a trust relationship with yourself gives you so much confidence because you know at the end of the day that you have your back and the things that need to get done, the things you say need to get done are going to get done because you said they were going to get done. And so do the things you say you're going to do, but start small. Keep small promises to yourself. Don't set yourself up for failure or sabotage which I've done before many a time in my life by, you know, starting from not keeping any promises to yourself to trying to keep like the biggest promises of you um, to yourself. Because after that, you're going to like feel almost like a failure. And so you won't want to even try. And therefore that defeats the point. Keep small daily promises to yourself. Now, in another part of the scenario, there you are just chilling, living your best life. You are just relaxing and you realize how badly you want to quit your job and that you just want to run away, start a new life, get a new everything, ditch what you've got going on here, no responsibilities and move away. Instead of suppressing and rejecting that part of you and saying well you're not logical or not thinking properly or not um, taking anything into consideration instead of suppressing it and pushing away you ask that part of yourself what need isn't being met you need to ask yourself the right questions self-trust is about saying here this is i can't pretend it's not there What is it trying to tell me? And I have found that instead of deciding that my thoughts are particularly illogical or particularly crazy, I bring that thought to the light. You know, I'm honest with myself and I say, what need isn't being met here? And some of them are really, really basic needs, you know, just purely physical. You need to exercise, you need to get moving a bit more, you just need to break out of a rat and get more in touch with yourself and do the things you love but also some needs are saying well maybe you are working too much and you need to find a way to bring a little bit more freedom into your schedule you know and part of that is holding yourself accountable it's saying okay what does that mean does that mean I ask my boss for a little bit of time off does that mean that I get up earlier and go do things that make me feel fulfilled so that the rest of the day doesn't feel like such a drag. What does it, what information is this feeling of wanting to quit my job and run away trying to give me? It's the little things. The devil is really in the details. Maybe the answer is to quit your job and run away because you know, that has worked for some people, but I know for the majority of humans who live in life, you can't, you know, just get up and go. That's not how things work. Bills need to be paid. Families need to be fed. And so I do suggest approaching your more off kilter thoughts with a little bit of grace and compassion and asking those parts of this yourself, what 
they need and offering that to them instead of rejecting it because that part of you is in you, you know, and you need to parent it and you need to show it that whatever it is feeling is okay and that you will deal with it. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) A very important step in order to get that sort of thinking right Please check out my other video, The Art of Self-Negotiation. That's definitely a helpful sort of self-talk video. But another thing that helps me to get this right is about how I listen to myself and my body. And how I do that is through self-awareness. And how I do that is through meditation and mindfulness practices every day being able to listen to your body and your mind and giving yourself what you need without judgment without judgment it's about saying this is what I know I need to be better right now and to take care of myself so that I can take care of the others around me and that we can be in a little love bubble you know so self-trust is about learning to listen to your mind and body and how you get the there is through self-awareness and how you get there is through multiple practices that help you become self-aware you find yourself in a place where you say this is me here i am these are my thoughts this is like what i'm working with i trust that all of these things these parts of me will come together in a concoction a multi-dimensional concoction that knows what the next right move is based on the information you have at the time for the situation and the decisions that need to be made and the depth and seriousness of those decisions. When you were a child, you had an inherent self-trust. You knew that you were you and that other people were other people and that you had your own thing going on and that everyone else had their own thing going on. And so there wasn't really that much judgment to what you were doing. Most of it was learned or judgment to who you were. Most of it was learned. And so my third tip in the self-trust vibe is to be yourself. Okay, it feels like it's bad advice because you hear that all the time, but be yourself. Go into any room and situation believing that A, you are meant to be there and that B, because you know you're meant to be there in that time, you can just be who you were meant to be so that you can give your gifts to the world freely and openly and so much opportunity and abundance will come to you as a result of just being yourself just going back to that childlike feeling of knowing that everybody in the room also has their stuff and you have your stuff and you can just share and love and grow together that's an absolutely beautiful understanding and knowing and I say that within reason you know there are some spaces where we need to be a little bit more reserved and subdued but when you trust yourself and know yourself and are self-aware and with your intuition then you can fully, fully know how to decide which times are to be fully open, which times are to be more reserved, which times are for protection, which times are for vulnerability. Being yourself and trusting yourself helps you to be so wise and discerning. And discernment, what a quality to have. I mean, you know, the, they are, there are other more obvious ways of learning to trust ourselves, like setting goals, because goals give us purpose. And when we work towards our goals and our purposes and we start to succeed, we learn to trust ourselves. You know, self-trust is also about learning different skills and cultivating our own skills and our own voice. And when you can do that and have something to deliver to the world, you trust yourself more because you're working within a certain uh, level of expertise. And so those things are important. But what's also important is knowing 
that just because people are the authority around you doesn't mean you should trust them over what you know is going on in your mind. And it's the dance between multiple facets of knowing and not knowing and being and becoming and unbecoming that helps us to trust ourselves. It's this sort of continuous up, down, in, out, upside down that we learn to trust ourselves. It's about going with the ebb and the flow of life. I think self-trust isn't just like one thing. You're not like, wow, here I am trusting myself. It's here I am learning. It's here I am failing. It's, oh my goodness, this is new. How do I do this? It's so many things. You know what I'm saying? One of the most important aspects of self-trust for me is self-compassion that goes hand in hand with accountability. You know, it's like being like, okay, you need to exercise to feel better when you're depressed and when you're anxious but you also need to know on the days where it really is impossible because sometimes it's impossible that it's okay because you don't have energy because you are fighting something else and so it's the dance between knowing on which days you can push yourself and be like exercise is medicine and I know it is going to make me feel even the smidgen a little smidge better and yeah it's important to 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 dance guys it's important to be within the sphere of many things being true at once then you can trust yourself yeah we're multidimensional remember Hearts, sparkle, hearts. Sorry for the chaotic video. Hope you liked it. Like and subscribe. Bye.